the DBX286S microphone preamp processor. It's a channel strip. If you haven't seen it before, then there's a chance you won't be watching this video because you haven't searched for it. Well, we're gonna test out this rack mounted device and talk about it. All that plus all the nerdy stuff coming right up. So, good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Jason Bourne. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified of new content right when it drops. Cheers. The DBX286S is a rack mountable microphone preamp signal processor channel strip. I decided to use all the words. It's used mainly for vocals or voiceovers, but it can be used for basically anything that needs a preamp and a channel strip. DBX is a well-known name in the audio world. They began in 1971, which was Dirty Harry and Bed Knobs and Broomsticks ago. They started out as a company that wanted to specialize in decibel expansion, hence DBX. Factoids. The goal was to bring live sound to tape recordings. They went on to be known for their noise reduction system and then compressors and then on and on. I've personally owned and sold several DBX rack processors in my life, but a couple of years ago I picked up this brand spanking new DBX286S. This guy right here. Because it seemed to be uh, popular with the podcast and broadcasting folk. Even musicians uh, have been known to have these, so um, they're, they're quite popular. It's good to have an analog channel strip at home. I used to have to go out to the local channel stripper joints if I wanted to see that. <laughs> I'm glad I have that at home now. The DBX286S is a very popular rack processor. That's likely due to its low cost, good name, and attractive features. It provides up to 60 decibels of gain, which is literally just enough to push a dynamic mic like the SM7B without the need of an inline preamp. It has four independent processors on board that can be used independently or in any combination. Currently, you're not hearing me through the DBX because I'm going to test it out momentarily for you. So for now, let's have a closer look. The DBX looks like pretty much any other one space rack unit. This guy has a silver face loaded with knobs, switches, and LED lights. It has six sections of processing. We'll go from left to right and explain the functions. The gain knob sits at the leftmost part of the face. It controls the signal input gain. It goes from zero to 60 decibels of gain in one second flat, which is just enough gain to push low powered mic like the SM7B, like I said earlier. Just enough, actually. The SM7B officially requires 60 decibels of gain. This is just that, totally maxed out. Next to that is your level input LEDs. It lights up from green to yellow to red. You don't want red. You wouldn't like it when it's red. Besides that is your phantom power switch and then an 80 hertz high pass filter. And that concludes section one. Between section one and section two is a process bypass button. This will bypass all the other sections after the first section so you can instantly toggle off and on the processing you're doing. Very helpful to compare what you've done versus the dry signal instantly. Section two is the processor section. It consists of a drive knob that brings up the input and a density knob that controls how much compression to add the ratio. The LED lights here show how many dBs of reduction is going on. Section three is the de section. The first knob is the frequency selector where you can find your offending S's and a threshold knob which controls how much reduction will happen. It's basically a multiband compressor, but just for your sibilant S sounds. There are little LED lights here that will show when it kicks on and off. Section four is all about enhancing. This section reminds me of a BBE sonic maximizer. It sweetens the sound. The LF detail knob increases pleasing low end and the HF knob increases pleasing high end. Section five is the expander gate section. The first knob controls the threshold and the second knob controls the ratio. The LED lights show when it's working. I'll, uh, I'll do a test and explain in just a few minutes. Section six is simply the output level. This is where you'll raise or lower the volume to achieve your desired signal level after all the processing is done. The top, bottom, and sides of the unit are featureless, but the back is where you'll have all your ins and outs. 
The power section uses a standard three-pronged plug that computer towers use. This is removable so that you can lose track of it and end up mixing up all your three-pronged power cables to all your other things. Then you've got an insert diagram that shows how you can run this unit in an effects loop. Over more, you've got your quarter-inch output, quarter-inch insert, quarter-inch TRS balanced line input, and your XLR mic input. This is a mono unit and only works on a mono signal. It's very heavy. It weighs about 4.5 pounds. It measures, oh, hold on a second. Let me just find my trusty old measuring tape here. You know, this measuring tape was manufactured in 2029. I picked it up off a crushed cyborg assassin in 84. It measures 19 inches across and 1.75 inches high as all single spaced rack units are and is 5.75 inches deep. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to using the SM7B through the DBX now. I'll be going from the SM7B into the DBX and then into the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X using a balance line level input and bypassing the preamps altogether. I'll record it on my Mac using Studio One Pro 6. Let's go. Okay, I'm on the SM7B right now and we've got it plugged into the DBX286S and we're uh, just checking it out here. So uh, right now I've got it at 60 decibels of gain, which is completely maxed out. Uh, and this is the sound. I actually have the output a little bit low because anticipating what I'm about to do next with the compressors and everything, I just wanted to have a little bit of headroom. So here's what it sounds like with nothing engaged. So phantom power is over here. We do not need that for the SM7B. The next, we have the 80 hertz high pass filter, so we can click that in. And this is the sound uh, while the low is cut off. Just 80 hertz and above. Um, I don't like the sound of it. That's just me. So there we go. Let's turn that back off. And here we are. The next thing we have is a compressor. The compressor section is simple. It has your drive and your density. So the drive brings up the amount you're gonna drive into the compressor and the, com the, the uh, density here shows how much compression we're gonna put on. So you can see the lights going back. Test one, two. There we go. Hello. Yeah. So I've got the density at full, which is taking quite a few dBs off. I wouldn't put that there. I put that there. And maybe the dent, the uh, drive just a little bit. So it tickles when I go a little bit loud. And we'd set that just about there, just in case. So I would talk regularly like this. And then sometimes I'd get loud like that. And it takes, it's a bit slow. I'll say it's a very slow to recover compressor. The release is slow. All right, moving on. All right, I moved the camera over just a little bit more, and uh, now we're seeing the compressor working here. Uh, as it uh, get really loud, there it is. So you can hear you can hear it working, and you can see it working. Next is the deesser section. So this is quite simple. It's at the off position right now. So we're going to turn it on. What I've done is dialed in around 5K, which is where my S's are, which is unusual. Usually they're six or eight, but for me they're always around the 5K mark. So I've dialed that in. There we go. Take the threshold up. So every time I say, see, it's taken out way too much. Now it sounds like I have a lisp. Listen, this is a lisp. Hello, test, test. Sibilance. <laughs> Remember that? Remember that on stage? Sibilance. Sibilance. There we go. Just have it kicking in just, just a little bit. There we go. S. That's even a little bit too much. Bring it down just one little peg. Test, test, test. I do like the feel of these knobs. They feel great. So now with the compressor and the DS are engaged, it's now time to check out the enhancer. What I said was kind of like a sonic maximizer by B BBE. So let's bring up the low frequencies. The low frequencies are very pleasing. That radio voice. Testing one, two. Bring it all the way up. There's that. There's that radio voice. <laughs> That's too much. So you brought it up just a little bit. Here's the here's the top end testing one, two. The pleasing top end. And now we're getting an enhanced sound. If I get loud, the compressor's kicking in. 
the S -s 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 is kicking on. We've got the Sonic Maximizer working. <laughs> I'm calling it the Sonic Maximizer. The Enhancer working. The last thing we can possibly do is put on a gate. And gates are, for me, hit and miss sometimes. Uh, I don't expect much from a lot of gates, but let's see. We're going to take the threshold and we're going to put it right about there. The ratio will tell you how much it's turning off. Every time you see it go red, it's turning off. So what about that? That's not bad. Like no noise whatsoever. It's not doing so bad right now. So, okay, so there you go. There's the gate. Kicking on. Compressor kicking on. DS or kicking on. Everything's good. So the last part of that now is going to be the output, which I'm not going to play with too much because that's going into the recorder right now. But you can bring it down, you can bring it up, and this is how you would set your output. One, two, one, two, one, two. So that's how you set your output. You can also get some more gain this way, but you'll also get more noise. So even if I wasn't, you know, if this was maxed out and it wasn't enough for the uh, SM7B, you could always increase your gain and get louder. Let's go back to the switch that turns off processing. Okay, so now we're back to where the processing switch is. And what we can do is bypass everything by pressing this button right here. So now we're back to what we were when we started out. Although it shows everything working, it's actually not. It's showing just the regular raw signal without the processing. When I undo it, we're back to being processed. So that's how you can switch. You can say, hey, what does it sound like compared to regular? There's regular, and here is enhanced. So, I mean, for a live situation, it's not bad. For recording, I mean, I guess it's cool, but for live, this is this is fantastic because you can, you can really uh, make a sound that you want. Anyway, so there we go. This has been the DBX286S. Back on D416. I tested the noise by plugging in my XLR dummy load. This little device mimics the 150 ohm resistance of a dynamic mic like the SM7B, but without the mic picking up anything. It's a good way to measure preamp noise, and if you want one of these, head on down to the description below and click on my store. I make them myself, and uh, I don't usually have a lot of stock on hand. They're made with the highest end male Nutric connectors and 3% silver solder. All right, back to testing the noise. Here is the noise of the DBX at 55 decibels of gain. Here is the noise of the Apollo Twin at 55 decibels of gain. Here is the noise of the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3.2 at 55 decibels of gain. And here is the noise of the Zoom H5 at 55 decibels of gain. Quickly again, back to back. So what we've determined is that the Zoom H5 is insanely noisy at 55 decibels of gain. The Mix Pre is the quietest of the lot, and the DBX almost tied with the Apollo. Almost. The DBX286S is slightly dirtier to my ears, but most of this noise is easily mitigated in post, so it's really not that big a deal. The DBX286S can be yours for about 275 US dollars. It's actually quite cheap for all it does. Time for my opinions. Analysis. Okay, for the price and what you're getting, this is a great piece of gear. I quite enjoy the compressor. I do like that you can power the SM7B, but I do find it's a tad bit noisy when you push it all the way to 60 decibels. Not too bad though, easily rectified in post, as I alluded to earlier. It's not a Neve or an Avalon or an SSL or an API or a 610. It's 
an entry level preamp and as such you're not getting that beautiful fuzzy multi-harmonic distortion that some of the great musical preamps will give you but on the other hand if you're looking to do a podcast and want to get your sound just right and outside the box then this is your guy it has a better preamp than a lot of entry level audio interfaces and the enhanced mode can do wonders for a stale sounding voice for music applications, there are plugins that are much better than this. Same with spoken word applications. But it's nice to set your sound physically before you hit record. It's definitely more appealing to use practical knobs and buttons as opposed to mouse clicks. And you feel cooler using it. And it looks better in your studio than on a computer monitor with cartoon racks. But do you need it? No. I don't think so, at least. Is it cool to have? Definitely. I mean, who doesn't want a rack sitting there? You know, everyone's like, yeah, there's buttons and knobs and lights and stuff. You know, I know what I'm doing. But just know that it's not a replacement for high-end preamps like the ones I mentioned a moment ago. However, if you were using this for, say, an electric guitar or bass guitar in your live rig with a tube amp, now that would be useful. I can see plenty of uses for the DBX286S in a spot on your live rack both before your amp or in your effects loop. As guitarists, we're never more than a song's length away from screwing with our amp settings anyway. Am I right? So we can fiddle with the knobs all night long. This would be great to really boost up your signal to drive the preamp tubes of your amp. I used to do it all the time with the DBX266XL. If you happen to have an interface for recording that only has line inputs for whatever reason, so like no XLR or phantom power, uh, then this unit would be perfect to get you in the game. So in closing, for live use, this is great. For music recording, it's not bad, but unnecessary, unless you need more gain. For podcasts, great, but unnecessary, unless you need more gain. It's better than a cloud lifter, but more expensive and requires more cables and power. So better to just get a cloud lifter and cheaper if you get the off-brand ones like the Triton Fetheads. So just to reiterate so that I, because I sound a little bit negative, it's it's a great unit. It, it really is. And it does a lot of great stuff. It's a great processing. It's, it's good. Um, but it's, I mean, there's just no reason for it that I can see. But if you want confirmation bias, like for example, if you already have your heart set on buying one and you want to hear good things, then buy it. <laughs> but if you um, are really just looking, uh, should I buy this? Like I said, all the things I said above, hopefully uh, you can glean from that what you can. I, uh, I did have a chance to test it out back in 68 when I was briefly working with the Beatles. <laughs> Man, I remember that day. <laughs> you, could, you could cut the tension with a knife. But uh, that was only because seconds earlier I had uh, quietly farted. John was the first to notice. The others caught on immediately after this photo was taken. <laughs> Memories. <laughs> Thus concludes my review of the DBX286S. And if you don't agree, well, too bad. I will bring this fight to your doorstep. Bye now. In transmission. Yes, thank you. I absolutely love that you've ended it so quickly. Watch these things. They're good. Watch them. They're good for you. They're good for your health. Bye now.